In this video, I'll be showing you two effects. The first one being how to go from a color clip to black and white. And the second one is how to do slow motion as such. Before we jump into the slow motion, it's important to note that your frame rate when recording is going to determine how much of the slow motion you can actually do in Caden Live. So for example, I'll be working inside of a project that is 30 frames per second. So I recorded at 60 frames per second. This will allow me to slow down my clip down to 50%. So going from 60 to 30, 50%, so half of 60. So let's say that your project is 24 frames per second. If you record at 30 frames per second, you get a very small margin of slowdown that you could do before you start to get choppy footage. So if you check your phone camera settings, you might find that you're able to record at 30 frames per second, 60, and for some phones at, I think, 120 for full on slow motion. You might even have a slow motion mode altogether. So let's jump inside of Kidna Live and see what we'll be working with. All right, so here I have the clip that you just watched. And if I go in the clip itself and inside of clip properties, you'll see that the frame rate is 59 frames per second. This might be because of the transcoding, but basically this is at 60 frames per second. That's what I'll be working with. So I'll jump over to sequence number two. I already have a clip zone over here. I'll drag it onto the timeline. So first we'll take a look at how we can go from a color clip to black and white. And this one is pretty simple. So if we go inside of the effects panel, let's go up to search and look for luminance i'll drag and drop the luminance and there we have it it's already black and white now you can control the contrast with a variety of tools you could use the lift gamma gain you could use levels you could use contrast so on and so forth another option that you have is to look for saturation and saturation would allow you to keyframe the change of saturation so going from black and white to color so if I drop the saturation here all the way, you see we have black and white again. And of course, if you increase it, you're going to get a lot of saturation. All right, so for this one, I'll simply stick with luminance. Now, of course, before applying the luminance, you could do some color correction. So making sure that your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows are all in the right place before converting to black and white. You could also do it after. And I do recommend that when you're doing some color correction or color grading to jump into the color workspace or the color layout inside of Kaden Live. Simply go up to the top right here, go to color, and that way you can utilize the waveform so that you keep an eye on your highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I'll jump back inside of effects and now let's do our slow motion. Now, one way you could go about doing slow motion is to simply right click, go down to change speed and lower the speed of your clip. So in this case, I could go as low as 50%, press OK, and we now have a slow motion clip. I could do some cuts on the clip so that some parts are at normal speed. So I would cut over here, change the speed of the beginning, etc. But instead, I'm going to undo this. Instead, we're going to use time remapping. That way you have a lot more control on the slow motion and you can even accelerate your clip all inside of one single panel. To use time remapping, all you have to do is simply right click on your clip and go up to time remap. It's going to open the time remapping panel if you don't already have it open. And now at the very top, we have this area, this sort of timeline. If I click on the upper half, left click and drag, you'll see nothing happens. But if I click on the lower half, so left click, hold and drag, you'll see that the playhead on the timeline is moving along with it. You'll also notice that nothing is happening on the screen. Now, this is a little bug that I've seen that happens every now and then. To fix this, simply click on the left uh, stopwatch over here. So you jump to the first frame and at the very top where it says source clip, click on this button over here to move selected keyframes. Simply click on it and now somehow it fixes the bug. I don't know why, but it just works. So I'm going to ask that you follow along and then I'll break down what we just did, all right? So over here, I want the first part of this clip to be accelerated. I know it's already sliding out pretty fast, but we're going to accelerate it even more and up to this point over here, let's say. Now to add a keyframe, simply click on the middle stopwatch over here. It's going to add a keyframe. And I'm going to scrub forward up to the point where I now want the slow motion to stop. So right before he hits the camera. So let's say around here, very close to the camera. And then I'll add a keyframe. All right. 
So like I said, I want this first segment to be faster. To do that, we simply have to click on the lower keyframe here. So the lower dot at the bottom, left click, hold, and I'll drag it to the left. And if you notice down here where it says source time, we have output time and output time is changing. It's actually increasing, meaning that we're going at a higher speed. So I'll drag this all the way up to about 200%. So let's say around here. You might notice that as I dragged it to the left, the clip on the timeline also got reduced. And this is because we accelerated the clip, therefore made it shorter because it's going to last for a shorter duration of time. And now if I scrub through this or even playback for you, you'll see that the beginning is a lot more accelerated, right? The playback is a little choppy, but take my word for it. Now I want to slow down the second part. So I want to have the slow motion when he's running through the hallway. And to do so, we now have to grab the second keyframe at the bottom here, left click, hold and drag it towards the right. And you'll see that the output time over here is decreasing. And this is because we're now slowing down our clip. So I can slow it down all the way to 50%, if you remember, because this is a 30 frames per second project and the clip that we're working with is 60 frames per second. So we can safely go down to 50% without having any sort of odd choppiness. And now if I were to play back for you, you'll see that we now have slow motion in this part of the clip. All right, now to break down what we just did and how this works. So the bottom dots that we have is how we control the stretching of the clip or the compression. So by clicking on it and then dragging it to the left, so your left, not my left, you're essentially bringing this keyframe closer to the start of the clip. So you're compressing it, therefore accelerating it. And when you drag it to the right, your right, not mine, you're stretching it, so bringing it further away from the start or the previous keyframe, thus slowing it down. And that's essentially what we're doing. Now at the top here, is where you control the original position of the keyframe. What I mean by this is, so let's say I want the slow motion to stop just a bit earlier. What I can do is click on the top keyframe and drag it. In this case, it will be dragging it to the left. So a bit sooner. So let's say, is it right? Yes, right there. And now the slow motion is going to stop earlier. So before earlier before he presses the camera. In doing so, if I jump on this keyframe, you'll notice that the output time has now been decreased even more. So now I simply have to drag it to the left to bring it back to the 50% mark. And there we have it. So the bottom one is how you control the stretching or compression. And the top one is how you control the original point of the keyframe. You can also use the align button. So you have down here, so move selected keyframe to cursor. And this one controls the source clip. And of course we have the stopwatches to jump between keyframes. All right. So at the bottom, we also have a couple of checkboxes. So we have pitch compression and this simply tells the audio to match the speed change that we did to the video. So basically by accelerating it, you get that higher pitch sort of audio and by slowing it down, you get that slower type of sound. Next, we have the preserved speed of next keyframe. And I think this one is somewhat self-explanatory, but essentially when we added the first keyframe that we went to accelerate, it didn't change the speed of the keyframe after it. Everything after stayed at the same speed. If you uncheck this by accelerating the beginning, we would have had to slow down the rest so that it remains at the same length as the original clip, if you will. Finally, we have this last checkbox, which is frame blending. And this is going to add motion blur to your clip. Yes. When you have a higher frame rate, you get some buttery smooth video, which might look unnatural, but that's not the point. Point is, if you want to add some motion blur so you get back that um, cinematic feel, if you will, you can simply check on frame blending. To demonstrate this, at the beginning here, when the subject is moving, you can see we have some minor motion blur, but if I check on frame blending, you'll notice the motion blur has drastically increased. That's basically what frame blending does. So that's one way you can add motion blur to your clip when using time remapping. And that's pretty much it. Now, before I go, for those of you who like to support the channel, I recently opened a Ko-fi account. So that's one way you could support. Another way is to share the videos or even to let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see in the next video. Finally, you can click on this playlist here to learn more about Kaden Live and thanks for watching.